The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Big news. Tonight, we're announcing first week's winners in Parquet Margarine's $83,500 Name the Twins contest. Yes, four glamorous Ford Victorias have already been awarded, and you'll hear the winners' names at the close of tonight's program. We're now in the middle of our third weekly contest. You have until midnight Saturday to try for the four beautiful Ford Victorias and 230 other prizes that will be won this week. Full instructions in our next announcement. Have paper and pencil ready. Tonight's great Gildersleeve program and this exciting contest are brought to you by Parquet Margarine, the margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Try Parquet tomorrow. Get P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Now, the great Gildersleeve. April in the air this fine afternoon in Summerfield, and spring is coming right out in the open. You can see it in the gardens, in the trees, and in the light-hearted step of the great Gildersleeve as he turns the corner heading for home. I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams. I'm as giddy as a baby on a tree. Hey, oh, hello, Leroy. Sure glad you're coming home, Unc. Well, thank you, my boy. How's everything with the family? That's why I'm glad you're coming home. What a bunch of droopy characters. What's this? Marjorie and Bronco and Bertie. You know what we ought to do, Unc? You what? We ought to boycott them. Boycott? Pick at them. Yofer. Leroy. I'm boiling. Yeah, so I see. What a family. You said that. Those twins. Yeah. What about the twins? Old Marge and Bronco. Just because they're the mother and father, they think they own those kids. Hey. <laughs> yes, well. Holy cow, can't even get near them. Before you can get in the room, you've got to be pasteurized. <laughs> yeah, well, I know, my boy. Marjorie and Bronco and Bertie are like three mother hens with those babies. Hens? Huh, eagles. <laughs> well, you'll have to be patient, Leroy. But why can't I hold them? You'll be able to hold them after a while. Why can't I feed them? What's to put in a bottle in a kid's mouth? I know which end the milk comes out of. <laughs> well, you just bide your time, my boy. Try to understand that Marjorie and Bronco and Bertie are only thinking of what's best for the babies. Ah. We should be glad they feel that way. We should be proud of them. Yeah. Now, let's go in the house and I'll be one happy family again. Okay. Hey, the boy's all right now. Yeah, I brought him around. Gildersleeve, you're a born diplomat. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're home. I'm home. Yo, feeding the babies. Come on, Leroy. Let's see the little tyke. Can I feed one of the monk? No, my boy. Let's be patient. Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Anki and Leroy. Hi. Evening, Mr. Gilsley. Good evening, Bertie. Yeah. Hey, Marjorie. It's a little difficult, isn't it, holding the two bottles? I'll feed the boy, if you like. Oh, you better let Bertie do it, Anki. I'll take him. Uh, Come on, little fella. You see, Anki? Leroy. They take the bottle much better from someone they know. Well, they know me, my dear. They know me, too. Well, of course they do, but at a distance. Maybe we could give them the bottle on the end of a stick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll take the little girl and let her finish up the bottle. Well, you just came home from the office, Uncle. You're tired. No, I'm not. I feel fine. You must be tired. You go right on the... I hold the baby while you rest. I can hold it while you both rest. Oh, she's going to sleep now. I'll hold her. This little man's ready for bed. He's stuffed. Hey, great. Yeah, I'll carry him in, Bertie. I'll take him, Bertie. Yeah, all right, Margie. You take the boy, and I'll take the little girl. Well, uh... right, George, I'm going to get a baby out of this somehow. Hello, folks. Yeah, Bronco. Where'd he come from? Hello, Bronco. Uh, Margie and I were just getting ready to carry the twins into the nursery. Come on, little girl. Well, little daughter, come to Daddy. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Here we go. Off to bed. A girl for you and a boy for me. You what about me? Leroy, here's something for you. Yeah, what? You can carry the blankets into the nursery. I got them. Bertie, isn't there anything I can carry? Yes, sir. You can carry these. 
four safety pins. <laughs> Confounded kids. Want to hog the whole thing for themselves. It'd be different if they only had one baby. They have two. They can spare one. What'd you say, Uncle? Yeah, I didn't say anything. I'm reading the paper, Leroy. Uncle Mort, a Bronco and I are going to the movie tonight. Would you like to go with us? Movie? No, I wouldn't care to, my dear. You and Bronco and Leroy go. I'll be the babysitter. Uh, but, Uncle... I don't think I'll go either. I'm going to sacrifice and stay here with Uncle. But Bertie's going to be here. Yeah, Bertie can take the evening off. But you've never taken care of the babies alone, Anki. You, I've been around lots of other babies. They're all alike. Sure, they all operate the same. Hey. <laughs> oh, Leroy, you keep out of this. Okay, well, you do what you like, Uncle Mort, but there's no reason for you to stay with Bertie here. Yeah, well, I'll take care of that. Bertie! That's the old fight, Unc. You call me, Miss Goofy? Yeah, I was just thinking, Bertie. Why don't you take the evening off? Oh, Bertie can't take this evening off. Miss Margie and Mr. Bronco's going out, and I've got to stay with the twins. Yeah, well, that's the point, Bertie. You don't have to stay. I'm going to be here. Yeah, me too. Miss Gilsey, do you mean you're going to babysit? Yeah, of course, Bertie. Have you ever babysat? <laughs> Certainly. I've been around all kinds of babies. I don't know why everyone makes such a big hullabaloo about mining a couple of babies. What could be simpler? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want me to go, Mr. Gilsey, I'll go if you sure you want me to go. Yeah, absolutely, Bertie. I'll stay if you want me to stay. No, you go ahead, Bertie. I'll either go or stay. Well, you go. I'll go or stay. Well, go. I mean, go. Go or stay. Yeah, Bertie. Bertie, go, please. All right, what you say goes. I'll go. <laughs> well, at last. Gee, we can have the twins all to ourselves for a whole evening. No, they're not toys, my boy. I'm only doing this as a matter of principle. I'm going to prove to a few people around here they're making a mountain out of a molehill. Of course, we may get a chance to look at the little tykes. Yeah, without somebody saying, go wash your hands. You, by the way, let's see your hands. They're clean. Go wash them with soap. <laughs> go for corn's sake. Well, we're ready to go, Anki. Uh, going with us, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, thanks, Bronco. But you might give Bertie a lift. She's going downtown. Bertie? Yeah, I told her to take the evening off. I'll be the babysitter this evening. On second thought, Marge, maybe we should stay home. Oop, Bronco. I really don't care about seeing the movie, Bronco. Well, why don't you go and I'll stay here? No, wait no, a minute. you go to the movie, Marge. I'll stay here with Mr. Gildersleeve. Go for a babysitter for the babysitter. I'd much rather that you'd go, Bronco. Why does anybody have to go? Yeah, I mean, stay. This is ridiculous. I've never seen such a pair of worry birds. Come back home, Bertie. Were you going out tonight, Bertie? Well, that's what Mr. Gildersleeve says. He says, Bertie, you go out, so I'm going. Well, you go right ahead, Bertie. I'm going to be here. Come again? Your Marjorie isn't going to be here, Bertie. She's going to the movies with Bronco. She is, huh? No, she isn't, Bertie. I'm going to be here, and Marge is going. Children, please. Well, I won't have you and Miss Marge staying home on my account. You go ahead and go. I'll stay. Now, listen to me. You're taking the evening off, Bertie. But I'd rather stay home, really. Yeah, I... I don't mind staying. But you know why I'm going to stay. Listen, stay. listen to me. Listen! Yes? Are you listening? We're listening. Nobody is staying home except me. The babies are going to be all right. Now forget all this silliness and go to your movies and wherever you're going. <laughs> this is a lot of nonsense. Maybe Mr. Gildersleeve's right. Well, of course I'm right. These are not the first babies in the world, you know. There have been a few others. They'll probably sleep until we get back anyway. Sure. Uh, come on, Marge. We won't be late, Anki. If you need us, we'll be at the Palace Theater. In the balcony. Goodbye, Anki. Goodbye, kitties. Have a good time. Well, Bertie? Don't look at me. I'm going. <laughs> I'm gone. Hi, George Gillespie. When you put your foot down, this family jumps. Are they gone, Unc? Yeah, they're gone. I was listening upstairs. What a battle. Yeah, well... I simply decided that you and I were going to take care of the babies tonight, and that was that. Yeah. Just think we got the twins all to ourselves. Yes, sir. What do we do with them? <laughs> we're not going to do anything with them. They're asleep. Let's wake them up. Let's toss them around. Leroy! <laughs> The 
Greg Gildersleeve will return after this important announcement. Ford Victorious, glamorous new 1951 Ford Victorious. Yes, Ford Victorious, most beautiful Ford cars ever built are waiting for owners. Twenty of these streamlined new models are being won in Parquet Margarine's great $83,500 contest series. Yes, and 1,150 other prizes as well. Just listen to these prizes. Each week for five weeks, Parquet is awarding four beautiful new Ford Victorias, 10 General Electric portable dishwashers, 20 General Electric triple whip mixers, 100 crisp new $20 bills, 100 crisp new $10 bills. Here's how you enter. Think of names for Bronco and Margie's twins. One's a boy, one's a girl, remember? Get an entry blank from your grocer. It will tell you how prize-winning entries are selected or use plain paper. Send your names for the twins plus your own name and address and your grocer's name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. With each entry, enclose the red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine. And remember, Ford Victoria winners whose entries are accompanied by two red end flaps instead of one are entitled to a special $500 cash bonus in addition to their first prize. One red end flap entitles your entry to full consideration for any prize. Two entitle you to an extra $500 if your entry wins one of the four weekly first prizes. Remember the address, Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. This week's contest, the third of five weekly contests, ends at midnight Saturday. So hurry, name the twins. Get your entry off tomorrow. Remember, there are two more weekly contests to follow after this one. So enter now, enter often. Don't forget, names of first week's winners will be announced in a few minutes. Well, it took a little doing, but the great Gildersleeve finally got his wish. He shooed Marjorie and Bronco and Bertie out of the house. And now, for the first time, the water commissioner and his nephew, Leroy, are babysitting with the twins. They've been at it about an hour so far. And the score, no hits, no runs, no errors. Gee, this is getting dull, Unc. When do we start having some fun with the twins? Yeah, be patient, Leroy. I'm not staying with the babies tonight for fun. I am. Golly, what's the use of babysitting if you just got to sit? Well, it is pretty quiet. I thought there'd be a little more activity. A couple of healthy youngsters like those. You'd think they'd stir around a little more. Maybe if we nudged them a little. <laughs> no nudging. Yeah, but maybe they're hungry. It's a dirty trick not to wake them up if they're hungry. Let's feed them. No, Leroy, Marjorie said we could feed them when they wake up. Yeah, but time's going by. Pretty soon everybody will be coming home and we'll be out of luck. Yeah, that would be a disappointment, all right. They slept right through. How do we know, Unc? Maybe they're awake right now. Maybe it's so quiet they think they're still asleep. <laughs> yeah, I doubt that, my boy. Well, gee, Unc, we haven't got much time. If just a little noise woke them up, that would mean they were getting ready to wake up anyway, wouldn't it? Well, it might. If we were just talking like this and that woke them up, that would be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary to shout, Leroy. We can simply use a moderate tone of voice. They must have the blankets over their ears. Now, Leroy, stop worrying. If they're going to wake up, they'll wake. There they go. They're awake. Well, what do you know? <laughs> they must have just been opening their little eyes. I'll get the bottles. See, now, Leroy, don't get pushy. I'll take care of the bottles. Okay, I'll go in and talk to them. Yeah, wait. Wait, we'll both go in. Then we'll take the baskets into the kitchen. Babies like to watch the bottles being fixed. Say, that's the little girl. What a voice. She's going to be an opera singer. That or a hog caller. <laughs> oh, there goes the boy. She woke him up. Come on, Leroy. Take a basket. Carefully. I can't hear you. Take a basket. Head for the kitchen. What a racket. <laughs> Heavy. Well, put it down someplace. Okay. Leroy, not on the stove. <laughs> pull a chair out of the breakfast nook. I got no hands. Well, 
Pull it out with your feet. I'm standing on them. Here, here, here. here put the basket. Yeah, not this chair. Yeah, I'll put mine over here. Okay. Uh-oh. He's clouding up again. Yours is just lying there. Why do I always get the one that hollers? Well, do something to amuse him. I'm getting the bottles ready. What'll I do? Go kitschy, kitschy, coo at him. Kitschy, kitschy, coo? Sure. Babies like that. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Go ahead. Kitschy, oh, I can't. <laughs> you do it, Art. Leroy, I have to get the milk out of the refrigerator and put it on the stove. What you cooking it for? I'm not cooking it. You have to warm milk for babies. No kidding. It, yeah, dinner's coming, kitties. <laughs> Look at that little face. Watching every move I make. He doesn't trust you. <laughs> he does, too. He knows his friends, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, milk's getting hot. Better put it in the bottles. Gee, that looks good. Can I have some? Le Leroy, this is for babies. Okay. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, two bottles. You feed that one, and I'll feed this one. Boy, this is keen. We know how to take care of kids, don't we, Uncle? Yeah. Here you are, you little bear, you. Put it in your mouth. Oop. What's the matter? Hey, mine's hollering, too. What's wrong, huh? Yeah. Maybe the milk's too hot. You think so? Don't taste it. How am I going to tell? Shake some out in the back of your hand. Like this. Oop. You're all over my trousers. I shook some out. It isn't hot. Well, something's wrong. What are you doing to that baby? I'm not doing anything. What are you doing? What's the matter with him, Unc? Oh, how should I know? Come on, baby. Come on. Nice milk. Whole bottle. See? Oh, my goodness. What do we do now, Unc? Oh, brother. Put him back in the baskets. Keep an eye on him, Leroy. I'm going to call Peavy. Oh, don't leave me alone with him. Stop shouting, Leroy. Yep. Better close the door. Yeah. Good old Peavy. He'll be able to help me. Sure. Peavy's pharmacy. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Peavy. This is Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this evening? Peavy, I need some advice. Quick. I'm taking care of Marjorie's twins, and they're raising the roof. What'll I do? Well, I don't know much about babies, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. Peavy and I never had any of our own. Well, I know that, but you're a pharmacist, Peavy. What do you give babies when they cry? Uh, well, uh, what do they want? <laughs> How do I know what they want? They're just yelling. Have you tried milk? Yes, I've tried milk. They cry all the louder. Well, how about this little pig went to market? Babies like that. What are you talking about, Peavy? You know, this little pig went to market. This little pig stayed home. It's a game. You play it with their toes. Well, I haven't time to play games with their toes. Well, there's always patty cake. Patty cake? You play that with their hands. You. Peavy, you get some of the silliest ideas. Yeah, well, I'm not trying to take care of two babies. But... Hurry up, Bob! Oh, my goodness. Can't you suggest anything, Peavy? Mr. Gildersleeve, this is a drugstore, not a day nursery. Uh, fine drugstore. Peavy, you're no more a druggist than I am. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> See you later, Peavy. Fine things. Marjorie and Bronco walk out and leave me with the babies. Run off to the movies. Irresponsible kids. Leave me with no instructions. Two babies on my hands. I just... Hey, they stay quiet. Maybe they've gone to sleep again. Leroy. Quiet, Uncle. They're dozing. Yeah, saved by a miracle. Marjorie and Bronco came home and found the babies crying. I never live it down. Oops, darn doorbell. Oh, both awake again. Who's at that confounded door? Good evening, Gelda. Judge Hook. Well, your happy home seems to be ringing with the voices of little children. <laughs> yeah, I ought to ring something right off your head, you old goat. What's wrong, Gelda? Come in the house, Judge. You just had the babies asleep, and you had to lean on that doorbell. Oh, I'm so sorry, Gelda. 
It seems to be quiet now. Are you... Say, they are. Go breathe. Where are they, Gildy? You're in the kitchen. Come on. Don't make sound. But you're making all the noise. Be quiet, Judge. Oh, there they are. Just as quiet as they can be. Don't make a sound. Anybody. I'm bushed. You are. Hush. You see, Gildy, the little darlings knew I was coming, and they're on their good behavior. Yes. Yeah, look out, Judge. Don't lean against that cupboard door. Your pants in there. What's that, Gildy? Yes, Judge. Yes. Judge, now you've done it. Holy cow, I'm going out for a walk. You stay here. We'll have no rats leaving this sinking ship. They're hurting my ears. Give them a bottle, Gildy. Judge, I tried to give them a bottle. I got milk all over me. Oh, my goodness, back door. Here comes Bronco and Marjorie. Well, I think I'll go out the front door. You stay here. Well, evening, everybody. Oh, it's Bertie. Oh, am I glad to see you. What's the matter with the little darling? They've been crying long? Shall we tell her? Yeah, there's something seriously wrong, Bertie. I've done everything right. Got the milk out of the refrigerator, warmed it, put it in the bottles, but they won't take it. Is this the milk you gave them? That's it. No wonder they didn't want it. That's buttermilk. Yeah, but they would be... <laughs> buttermilk. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, never mind. What are we going to do, Bertie? What are we going to do? We have to get them quiet before Bronco and Marjorie come home. Well, let me take them, Mr. Gilsey. Now, kids, Bertie, now go on to sleep. Sleep or play has passed away. The night is drawing near. All your toys must be laid away. That you love so dear. Prayers must be said. Then tucked into bed without a tear in your eye. The sandman takes you by the hand while Bertie sings a Bless you, Bertie. We're back, Chunky. How's everything, Mr. Gildersleeve? Fine. Everything's just fine. Uh, how are the babies? Yeah, they're in bed. Did they give you any trouble? Trouble? No. <laughs> They were all right? Marjorie, there was nothing to worry about. Yeah, I guess you're right. 
They're pretty good babies. Yes, as Bertie says, just perfect angels. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, here they are, the first week's winners in Parquet Margarine's $83,500 Name the Twins contest. For entries postmarked before midnight March 17th, glamorous new Ford Victorias go to... Mrs. Sanders Harris, Fort Valley, Georgia, who is also a bonus winner. E.H. Davis, Rockford, Illinois. Mrs. Ray Pease, Atkinson, Nebraska. Mrs. Violet McElveen, Houston, Texas. Winners of other prizes will be notified by mail. You have until midnight this Saturday to get in your entries in the third week's Parquet Margarine Contest. Your entry must include your names for the twins, your own and your grocer's name and address, and the red end flap from a package of Parquet Margarine. Two red end flaps if you want to try for a $500 bonus as well as a first prize. Send entries to Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. Hurry! Your names for the twins may win you a brand new Ford Victoria. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rather proud moment for all of us who gather here each week to help bring you the great Gildersleeve programs. As you know, April 1st marks the beginning of Invest in America Week. And tonight, we are honored to have as our guest the chairman of the Invest in America Week Executive Committee, Mr. W.G. Paul. Thank you. On behalf of the Invest in America Week movement, I am happy to make this presentation. The Invest in America Week Executive Committee takes great pleasure in citing the Kraft Foods Company and the National Broadcasting Company for presenting Willard Waterman, whose intelligent and understanding portrayal of the great Gildersleeve has contributed immeasurably to the public understanding of the role of the individual in building America at the community level. Most sincere thanks to you, Mr. Paul, and, and to all your committee. And I speak for all the Gildersleeve family. What a fine fellow. <laughs> Good night, folks. The great Gildersleeve is played by Leonard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Easton saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and those other famous Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. What's the difference between a sandwich that's really super and one that's merely good? Here's the answer. Kraft's prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard to cold meats or cheese, you add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors pop right out. Every bite tastes better. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. With either kind, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the worried wife. Listen for Irrepressible Groucho Marx on NBC. NBC.